whole situation started with the second intifada, we were really affected so much, I mean, by the shooting of the Israelis, because behind us, I mean, we have this military camp, and they occupied, of course, this building here. And now in front of us, they start building the wall. If somebody comes close to the wall, they start shooting. If somebody cross even, I mean, to the unfinished area, they start shooting. That's a bullet out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bullet, actually. There is another one here. You can see it. See the two holes. Is that any compensation or...? Uh... Compensation from whom? Who's going to compensate you? Nobody. And you can sense, I mean, it's really what's happening is it's they're carving around it. Yes, they're going to be pretty much uh, surrounded from three directions by the wall. Right. Uh. Rachel's tomb was one of Bethlehem's affluent neighborhoods, situated in the vicinity of an ancient shrine, erected on the burial site of the biblical matriarch Rachel, who died on her way to Bethlehem as she gave birth to Benjamin. Throughout the ages, the site fascinated pilgrims and painters and had been venerated by Muslims, Christians, and Jews. But it was the third holiest site in Judaism, so Israel got busy changing the face of the tomb the moment it laid hands on it in 1967. By 2001, the shrine was encased inside a fortified construction and locals were banned from entering. Rachel's legacy had become the property of Jewish pilgrims alone, and only Israeli buses had access. Now the familiar white dome was just about visible from behind mounds of concrete. And with the wall, Israel's plan was to cut the tomb out of Bethlehem altogether. On a map, it would look like this. This is the neighborhood, this is the tomb. The wall was supposed to skirt around the edges of the residential part of the area, then form a corridor that would dig even deeper into the city to carve out the site and annex it to Israel. People like Basim and Claire were unfortunate to live nearby, but they had to be grateful. They would be able to remain in Bethlehem. Others had it even worse. An old-time shopkeeper called Khalil found himself on the wrong side of the wall. His shop stood here inside the southernmost tip of the corridor. When the construction is complete, Khalil will lose his business because neither he nor anyone else in Bethlehem would be able to set foot in this spot. <laughs>
For all the tragedy it was causing, Israel's only response was that the war was needed for the security of its own citizens. But why not build it then, on Israel's own borders? And how safe was it to provoke such rage among one's neighbors? It didn't take long before the road to Jerusalem was sealed permanently, severing the last link between the two twin cities. No one could believe it, and emotions were running high. From now on, the people of Bethlehem would need military permits to pay a visit to their family on the other side, see their doctor, or go to work. Those who continued protesting risked arrest. 40% of Palestinian men have been to jail for political reasons. If you're arrested, you are blacklisted. If you are blacklisted, you might never get a permit again. So in time, you become resigned to the fact that you are now a prisoner. Min marathi irmiya nabi ale. جلست وحدها المدينة الكثيرة الشعب صارت كارملا العظيمة في الوما السيدة في البلدان صارت تحت الجيش 